Ondo State and a state assembly is in the news again. And from running for the office of a governor to running for a senator, Bapatunde Badamosi wins the ticket of the PDP for the Lagos East senatorial by-election. This is Plus Politics. I am Kayodi Ladeni. Welcome to Plus Politics. In a manner similar to that of a Do State, the entrance of the Undo State Assembly complex has been barricaded by thugs. This is taking place about a month to the Undo State governorship election. It was gathered that the hoodlums were at the complex because of the Speaker of the House, Bamidele Oloye Logun. It is believed that these occurrences is part of the ongoing feud between Governor Rotimi Akeredolu and his deputy Agbola Ajayi, both of whom are candidates of separate parties for the upcoming election. Joining us to throw more light on this is the Deputy Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Honorable or Right Honorable Iroju Ogundeji. Good evening. Good evening, Karade. How are you? Yeah, good to have you again. Thank you. Yeah, the last time it was a case of uh, being, uh, I remember that uh, the faction who actually got you suspended did say that you were running away from uh, coming to the complex. But what is the situation now that uh, you and some of these suspended lawmakers try to come? How true is the information? Because according to the speaker, these were members of NULTWU and not thugs. Thank you, Karadel. Uh, you will recall that sometimes around July, July 7 and 8 precisely, the governor influenced some members of the State House of Assembly to institute an impeachment process against his deputy. We are nine of us dissociated ourselves from the impeachment process. And thereafter, the governor directed, according to the speaker, that my very self as three of the members that dissociated ourselves from the impeachment process be, be, be suspended, which they so did. Now, after the purported suspension, irrespective of the fact that the Speaker or the House of Assembly or the Governor did not have the power or the authority to so suspend us from, the, from carrying out the constitutional responsibility for which we are elected to do in the House. We decided not to take law into our hands. We approached a court of competent jurisdiction in Nondo State, Akure. And since then, last week, the court gave a ruling and uh, decided that the purported suspension is a nullity, is uh, unconstitutional, and null and void, or travare. So since then, the, the judgment, the, 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 the enrollment of judgment has been served on the speaker and all the, uh, the, 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 the respondent in the case. So instead of them to obey the court order, for us to go back to our various offices as duly elected representatives of the people, what we saw today is that the speaker with the governor brought talks from the National Union of Road Transport uh, Workers of all those states, led by one Idajo, who is known as a talks and as a, 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 a troublemaker in Nondo state, to come and take over the premises of the state assembly. And uh, the allowing us from entering the, uh, the, the assembly and to carry out our constitutional responsibility. Okay. They threatened our lives. In fact, we ran for our dear life. They wow. nearly maimed us and killed us. This is the handiwork of okay. the governor and the speaker. Honorable, I, I, I will be, uh, if, if time permits, or probably uh, after this interview, we would like to see if there is any uh, more evidence to this uh, claim because uh, the report we have is that they were called talks. As a politician, please, if you can clarify for us, will it be fair to call members of NULTWU thugs or because it has to do with you? 
They are members of National Union of Road Transport Workers of Ondo State, led by Idajo. I personally cited Idajo, and I cited a fourth lot of members of that union at the premises. But unfortunately to them, they didn't see me where I was hiding when they, when they threatened to kill me. That's a very serious allegation. But, 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 but let's stay on this issue. Looking at uh, what is anticipated, you know the circumstances that led to your suspension, and thank God you were able to get justice and the three others from court. But did you preempt that there could be some kind of stiff resistance? Did you take proper care, or you just felt you can go? Since you have the court judgment, you want to return to the house? Thank you. The lawyer that represented them at the court is the state attorney general and commissioner for justice, who is supposed to be uh, an officer of, in the temple in, of justice. So he has the judgment with him, and we believe that he is expected to advise them accordingly. If at all, they are novices of what the law says. And notwithstanding that, the governor of the state He's a senior advocate of Nigeria, and we believe he's equally a novice in the court, uh, temple of justice, who's supposed to know better. But instead of them to obey court order, they are doing what they are doing, and uh, taking law into, 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 into their hands, and refusing and uh, uh, disallowing us from entering the court, the, the, the House of Assembly, to perform our constitutional and legitimate responsibility as elected. By our people. Okay, uh, uh, Deputy Speaker, I, I'm freely calling you Deputy Speaker now since the court has restated you and they've declared the action as uh, ultra virus. But I'll come back to you. We're being joined by Femi Lawson, uh, uh, an indigenous of Ondo State and a political analyst who is also following up the trend in the state. Femi Lawson, you're welcome. Good evening, Cardi. Uh, let me quickly get your insight. Uh, you had the latest, and I'm sure you're also following the latest. What do you make out of these um, alleged thugs, you know, barricading the House of Assembly and I'm preventing these reinstated lawmakers from coming back to the House? Well, I think uh, fundamentally, uh, it is, I want to appreciate you, and I think it is important that uh, when issues like this are raised, you know, it's important that the media play its own strategic role in, you know, finding the facts and actually, you know, letting the citizens, many of whom may not be present at the scene of this kind of incidency, to know the truth. And like you said, I'm from Ondo State. I've been involved. I've been on the ground, you know, for some time. And I've witnessed the series of antics of politicians, you know, because of the forthcoming October 10 election. And I can tell you, that that state assembly today had nothing less than 50, you know, policemen with their truck, you know, guarding the House of Assembly, you know, this same House of Assembly that these persons are saying have been taken over by thugs, you know, today. I am not talking about, you know, what you are reading on the social media or what rumor that uh, may have been spread. And I think it's also important that Actors in this game, mainly members of the State of Assembly, should learn how to, you know, engage the instrumentality of the law, you know, in approaching this issue. It is good that when these members were suspended by their colleagues in the House of Assembly, they approached the court of law. They didn't need to mobilize those family members and supporters, you know, to get themselves reinstated. If they have approached the court and they have secured you know, an order of the court asking them to be reinstated. And I think the same instrumentality of the law should be used. This has been, you know, the law enforcement, the police, you know, and every other relevant authority to ensure the implementation of the order of the court. It is not within the power, and I think it is not really wise enough for people to resort to self help mobilize, you know, supporters and sometimes thugs to enforce law or to oppose it. The truth is that these same people who have been prevented from gaining access to the House of Assembly did not go to the Assembly alone. They also came, you know, with a group of supporters, just like the other groups that have suspended them came to the House of Assembly. And I think it is also unfair, you know, to have continually, you know, indicted 
Governor Kredolo has been responsible for the situation in the House of Assembly. The truth is that whether anybody likes it or not, Governor Kredolo has been civil in his approach. Okay. Governor Kredolo has been Femi, decent Femi in his approach. Nothing. And I, I think it's one of the very unusual you know, okay, governors I, I will come back to you. He's able not to get himself physically, you know, duly involved <coughs> in the okay. politics of the state. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me come in here. I, I will come back to you uh, uh, later on. Uh, um, uh, very soon, we'll also be joined by uh, Dr. Paul Daramola. But let me go back to the deputy speaker. Uh, the narrative that uh, Femi Lawson seems to be giving us looks a bit uh, different from your own. Like I interviewed you the other time, can we have some kind of proof? Maybe not video thank, this thank time you, around. Thank, thank you, Kayade. Femi, just, Femi Lawson is very economical with the truth. In fact, the basic truth is this. None of the three members did went to the assembly complex today. As I speak with you, I am in Lagos right away. But before I left Akura this morning, when I had the information that talks and National Union of uh, Road Transport Workers has barricaded the entire premises, I took my bike in company of my colleagues. We went to the environment to look at things for ourselves. We did not enter the premises. So what Femi Lansing was saying is very, very is untrue. And we don't know where he is unfunded. So for him to have been saying what he's saying, meaning that he's taking side and he's being economical with the truth. Okay. So if I it is correct you. that we did enter the police, uh, uh, the House of Assembly premises today, we could have been leaked. And therefore, for your information, the police that you said you saw in, in number, they were brought there to give protection to the speaker and some of his members that are to the talks. That was actually what happened. The pressmen were there to cover the incident. In fact, I saw all of them where I was hiding, and none of us do enter that place today. So if the man is saying that we went there today, it's been economical with the two, Honourable. and it's a pure fallacy Honourable. of what Honourable. he said. Honourable. It's a figment of his imagination. Honorable Roger, let me stay with you before Thank I go back to Femi. I'm probably being joined by another guest. Uh, i just like you to clarify something. Are you saying that uh, while you were in Akure today, you rushed down to Lagos? I'm just asking. I, I, they, if I, they, they, they came to the assembly complex early in the morning. Okay. We've got to report about three days back that they are coming to barricade the place and they are coming to kill us. Three days ago. And reports have been given to police. We personally went to the commissioner of police about three or four days back. I, in company of my colleague, to lay this report. We went to the state security service to lay this report to them. So this morning, when we are aware that they are there, we took our vehicle <clears> to go and see things for ourselves. But we lay sick somewhere where they didn't see us. We heard ourselves. So before I left, I couldn't this afternoon. Okay, and uh, why the choice of Lagos? No, 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 I have, I have an important assignment before. Okay, okay, uh, okay. I, I, I'm just curious because uh, we, we can't understand why um, you would be accused of uh, creating a story that never happened. But Femi, if you're there, um, let me I, I have you uh, explain in an explicit manner what exactly do you think these lawmakers are up to. Why shouldn't they be allowed into the State House of Assembly? I'm sure you're aware of the court ruling. It is, it is, yes, it is, it is purely, you know, you know, fallacious. Sorry to say, you know, when people, you know, bring emotion, you know, wanting to use it to override the reality on the ground. Let me give you an instance. The deputy speaker now just said that it's in Lagos, number one. He was in the assembly, sneaking around, according to him, you know, looking and... No, the truth is that if anybody has listened to the rumor period on the social media from the morning till this evening, if you look at the alarm raised by this same set of people, you would have thought that these people were in the, at the assembly and they were prevented. But thank God that he has admitted this said just now, that they were not even at the assembly. He himself had admitted now that he's currently in Lagos. And the truth is this, how would people who never went to the assembly claim to have been barricaded 
and prevent them from having access or getting access to the assembly. Number one, how would somebody have sat in the corner of his room, possibly within the vestry, and you know Bofemi, concluded Bofemi, that the, the, Bofemi, the, the people why who were at the assembly, who why? they are accused to be Bofemi, told, can you have been given cover by the police, who he agreed with me were on the premise, no, were in numbers at the assembly. People cannot continue to raise unnecessary tension and alarm, especially when we are approaching a very sensitive election because they want to be politically correct. The truth is that if we are going to go by the statement just made by the speaker now, none of these members, whether three or nine, were present at the House of Assembly today. There who were the talks there to prevent from no, telling no, us no, that no, they were talks. These are the fundamental okay, issues. It's I, not I, enough to sit in, in Lagos and begin to indict, you know, a governor in Akure for preventing you from gaining access to the assembly when you yourself have admitted that you were not in the assembly, that you only... Yeah, I'm going to allow you. I'm going to allow you. And, you know, what's happening... Trust me, Iroju. Femi, please. Femi, please. Let me begin to ask that Femi, what is his own take on this matter? Is he a member of the assembly? <laughs> and what is what role is he playing? You I mean, is he a public? Let us know. Okay. Let us know. 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 Let us will answer you. He will answer you. Or who's there? It's a very negative and false image of you know, what is happening in our state. It is not Let us know who's at this place. And claim that people are preventing you from Femi, the assembly in Akure. Can we have a bit of decorum here? Yeah. Femi, Femi, please. Uh, I, I, I don't know why people will, because of uh, Iroju, be continuing to tell lies. Somebody Honorable will say the Iroju, name of the assembly. You, 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 you have said it yourself that you were, you only hid yourself somewhere watching. You claimed that you never intended to enter the assembly. You also claimed that you are in Lagos. How possible was is it not possible for, for me to leave and pray after the, the attack and come back to Lagos? You did not even have intention of going to the assembly in the first place. Can, I, can you allow me to ask him now? They come, they barricaded the assembly. They come, they barricaded the assembly. Honorable the Iraju, Femi, okay, I will want the PCR to help to me to mute your, your voices. Your voices. Please, please, can you help me mute their voices? Let me communicate my question to you. Thank you. Excuse me. <coughs> so, um, Femi, I, 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 in, in fairness, I was going to ask you the question you raised. What exactly do you think about members that were reinstated by the court? And do you think they will not be excited to go back? Don't you think there is a clear kind of uh, resistance that has been put up there? Now, you can allow Femi react. Well, for, you know, every time I always say this, that, you know, when you talk about, you know, adherence to rule of law, law and order, you don't understand. You must give credit to the incumbent administration in Ondo State. And Honorable Roger himself can attest to it. Can you, can you please, you've not answered my question. You heard us the question an impeachment process that, that is legally Iroju, please. As of what authority are you talking time. now? You never Honorable you Deputy Speaker, I will have to put, put off your mic. State, Let him respond. Rule of law. And I don't think there has been any public statement, either by the Assembly, or the state governor, who is not even involved, you understand? Saying that these people, you know, will not be readmitted into the assembly or rejecting, you know, the decision of the court. You cannot continue to, you know, indict, you know, people when they have not even made any statement to the effect that the court, when the impeachment process was stopped by the court, the assembly, every other person involved, and, you know, agreed with the position of this, it's not, uh, the, the chief justice of one of those states, who said she cannot set up you know, a, a, a panel to, to investigate the deputy governor. Nobody went for that. This is, and, you know, this is a reflection of how willing these people were, you know, to abide by the rule of law. You cannot sit in Lagos and continue to indict, you know, a government in Akure just because you think, you know, everything should be, you know, should be based on emotion. I think it is not fair, you know. Let's okay. know from family if he's a member of the assembly. Okay, Iro uh, Honorable Iroji, you, you have time to respond now. I'm from Ondo State. Um, Mr. Femi Lawson, let me allow Iroji to respond now. He has responded that he agrees that the law must take its course. So please, can I ask, is it today that you plan to return to the house? And why haven't you returned to the house 
to take your seat back. Thank you. Last week, after we after the enrollment of judgment of the court have been served on all the parties, the, the those of us that were purportedly suspended are now restated back by the by the by the court. We decided to visit the House of Assembly. When we got there, we did not see anybody, but we reported ourselves to the clerk of the house. And when we left the house, the second day, the speaker, in conjunction with the governor, went to the assembly to mount a barricade that was not there before. And they sent signal to us that we should not come to that assembly again. We reported to the attorney general, who was their lawyer, and we reported to the director of state service. We reported to the commissioner of police all these things that has happened, happening. And on, on, about three days ago, we are aware that they are planning to attack us if we dare venture into moving near the premises of the, of the, of the assembly, which they indeed carried out today. So this by me launching of a thing. I don't know him, and I don't know who Cliff is playing, because it's very, very economical with the truth, and I don't know why he should be telling lie here. So, Kyle, I want to advise, bring the Speaker of the House, or Leia Logan, to this forum. And bring me to let us confront ourselves. Let's ask ourselves questions. Okay. So don't bring an inter don't bring a third party who doesn't know anything about the affairs of the assembly to this forum. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I I I'd like to put it on record that um, we are yet to get in touch with the speaker, and I'm also extending this open invitation to the speaker or the spokesperson of the House of Assembly. However, bring the speaker himself. Bring the speaker okay. himself. Let him come and confront me. Bring the speaker himself. I, I promise you that I will continue to reach out to him, and you could yes. also avail us some form of contact that we can use to have him defend himself. And yes, uh, and uh, Femi Lawson is also competent to be our guest, being an Femi MBG John Lawson is not of Undo. So you cannot because speak competently you, about you, the no, no, you, I'm, 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 I'm a voter in on, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a bona fide indigenous of Odo State. I'm a part of the indigenous of Odo State. State. Okay, gentlemen, right gentlemen, we need to so round off now. Because you are not being a political with you, you are not being a political with you. Gentlemen, we are paying your bills. We need to round off. I need to get your final take. Penny Lawson. Do we need to invite the speaker Femi to come Lawson, the Honorable like, Iroju, can we be civil, please? Okay. Can you say, I, need this. I mean, I have to cut both of you because time is far spent, um, but uh, the, 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 the jury is out there. Let people decipher what exactly is the true picture. We will stay on this story. We will try to find out whatever the true position of thing is. But the position of both of you is that the law must take its course. Justice must be served. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We thank you once again. Let me thank my guest again before we go to the second topic. Uh, Honorable Iroju Ogundeji is the Deputy Speaker of Ondo State House of Assembly. Like I hinted you, I, I didn't introduce you as a factional Deputy Speaker. You are the authentic speaker. That's what the law says. Thank you for Definitely. your time. Definitely. You are correct. Kyle. Thank you very much. And thank uh, you. Mr. Femi Lawson, Lovely. thank you for being, uh, <laughs> will I call you a true son of uh, your state, but we'll find out what the real issue is, since both of you disagree on many levels. Thank you once again. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now by showing you a plus report. And when we return, Babatunde Badamosi joins us to speak on the Lagos East Senatorial by-election slated for October 1st. Please don't go anywhere. Over 600 delegates of the People's Democratic Party from five local government areas of Lagos enter the PDP party secretariat in Shomulu, Lagos on Saturday, September 6th, 2020. They are here to cast their votes for four aspirants in the Lagos State by-elections primary. Two seats in the National Assembly Senate became vacant after late Senator Oshinowo died on June 15th and late Senator Jim O'Brimer died on July 10th, both from COVID-19 complications. The by-elections for Lagos East Senatorial District and Kushofer 2 State Constituency 
began around 12.30 p.m. and delegates were excited to cast their votes. I have to be part of change in PDP. That's why I come. To vote for the candidate I believed in. A total of 626 votes were cast, sorted and counted. And after hours of waiting, the Electoral Commission made this announcement. Babatunde, Oyalere, Badamosi, 529 votes. Babatunde Badamosi defeated three other aspirants to emerge PDP candidate for the Lagos East Senatorial District. He expressed his gratitude to the people and reeled out his plans for them. I have to thank all the delegates that voted for me today. And I guarantee you that with my fellow aspirants beside me, we will bring something more to the table than ordinary governance. After five hours of voting, the election process has been concluded and a candidate has emerged for the People's Democratic Party. In less than two months, and that's on October 31st, 2020, residents of the Lagos East Senatorial District will go to polls once again, and that's to elect a candidate that will represent them in the Senate and propose laws in their best interest. Anetta Felix, reporting for Plus TV Africa.